Hello class, we're going to continue with basic uh, textures and enhancements in Illustrator and we're going to look at Photoshop effects this time. And so for that I'm going to look at this grass. Right now it's just a solid color but it's probably the most amount of color on this page and it's sort of flat. And, and uh, two reasons why I'm going to give this texture is A, because it's, well, a few reasons. Well, one is it, it'll, I think it'll make a good enough lesson for these video series for you to practice with. Uh, again, it's not, you can choose to do things the way you want to, um, A. But two, um, grass has texture, so we're going to sort of make it textured to, to make it more feel like that. Um, and three, it's not part of the base architecture, so sort of giving that subtlety like the clouds to the background I think will just help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to layers, I'm going to lock my clouds layer, and I'm going to unlock my grass layer, and we're going to have Photoshop effects. And we, we, we looked at Illustrator effects, which is the top part of this Illustrator effects. We're going to look at this bottom part, which is Photoshop effects, and we will get the Photoshop in this class, and a lot of these effects are almost identical to the way they work in Illustrator, in, uh, sorry, in Photoshop. Interestingly, Photoshop doesn't have really, well, it sort of does, but not quite the same way. Um, um, so now the interesting thing is a lot of these effects in the in the Photoshop portion will not um, work right away because the Illustrator effects they work off the geometry and every shape you have by its very nature has geometry and so it'll do whatever it's scheduled to do. Photoshop effects work off of how it's sort of rendered, what the internal fill looks like, and a lot of if you just have a solid color like a solid green or any solid color. Photoshop effects can't work. They need to start out with some variation to begin to work because it's about some of the algorithms behind the screen or comparing one pixel to the next and then transforming it and so on and so forth. But if they're all the same, it keeps running the same algorithm and returning the same result, therefore no change. I'm going to show you that, for example, because what I'm probably going to use on this one is I'm going to use angled strokes. And if I pull up angle strokes, it's going to pull up your your box, which changes, which shows you what the change is going to look like. Uh, and we can see it still looks like the same green. Nothing happened. So I got to cancel that. It's not going to work. If you're going to use Photoshop effects, you usually have to start with a few select. Unless it's an image like this tree, which has natural variation, I could run an effect on. But it's fine. I want to. I'm going to keep it that way. Although you could make your trees look any way you want. Um, uh, some good ones to work from are either under texture, which is grain, which is the one I'll use in a second. Even any of these will produce some change. Or under artistic, you could go to film grain, which is very similar to grain itself, except for it's more monochromatic uh, than what what uh, the texture under grain is. So I'm going to go to grain, and uh, and you can see what grain's going to do is it's going to add a bunch of dots. Now I'm not sure how this video is going to come out on YouTube, so I'm going to probably make mine more intense than what you probably should for a subtle effect. Uh, by playing with these bars here, you can see it changes. I don't even again I don't even know if it's necessarily coming through um, how it, how it looks, but but I, just, but I want some texture, and this is going to be a bunch of dots. So so I'll say OK. And you probably didn't see any change there, but if I zoomed in, we can see there is indeed a bunch of dots. Now I can come through and I can apply any effect, because once I've had some variation there, any other effect would go. So for example, I started with angled strokes, so I could come over here and select angled strokes, and this will come up, and I can play with these these bars to change various settings, and each each one of these, there I can I can still access all of those lists here. So I could I could go to paint dobs, I could go to underpainting, I could go to watercolor, which by the way dev never really looks like watercolor. Um, although I might show us some tricks on how to make it look more like watercolor. Like so there's the watercolor effect. Sometimes it takes some time. I would say that does not look like watercolor color at all. But I'm going to go back to uh, which one was I looking at before? I was looking at uh, angled strokes, brush strokes here, uh, angled strokes is right there. And I'm going to set my balance all the way to one side and I might want a fairly long stroke length in my sh my sharpness again. I might make it a little bit sharper than I might otherwise for YouTube. Actually, I'll keep it fairly soft and I'll say OK. And it's going to take some time to generate all this because it's uh, I've, I've just had a, a Illustrator has to keep you know all these color variations in sort of its memory so there's a lot of now it's sort of creating a lot of pixel work and each pixel needs to sort of be coded in there so it takes some time to apply and definitely applying these effects can slow down your drawing 
um, but they can sort of be worth it. We can see it's not applied yet. It's still sort of going through the process here. Ooh, black screen. Hopefully this will come back for you guys um, when this is done. Never really seen this one before, but I'm hopeful. It does take a little bit of time here. Boom. There we go. Okay, good. It came back. And so we can see there is now this subtle subtle look of angled stroke. So it's not just a solid uh, feel to add some texture, add some interest. Again, there is a billion ways you could take this. This is just the most simplest way I could sort of go about to, to, to sort of teach these concepts. And you can still do the same thing I did in the previous vi video with appearances. So I can go and change grain. I could change angle strokes. I could turn off. I could apply. I, I can delete it. If I don't like angle strokes, I can delete it and apply a new effect or not apply anything at all. I could leave grain. Um, so there's lots you can do. I can't show everything. I might give a couple other videos and some other tricks, uh, but uh, definitely we'll have at least one more video on this. We'll see how much I get accomplished, but don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to look at other people's work, and don't be afraid to have an idea. Ask me, and we'll figure it out together.